You made a phenomenal decision today to join us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, because our special guest is wide receiver coach Troy Walters. And this guy is a great football player himself. He won the Fred Bolitnikoff Award at Stanford, the best wide receiver in the nation. Played with the Indianapolis Colts and Peyton Manning, and I tell you, he knows the game. He knows the wide receiver position. The players respond to him, respect him, because he's been there, done that. They work hard. He gets maximum effort out of them. They perform at an extremely high level, whether it's Jamar Chase, who has a club record 15-catch game for 192 yards, or if it's Trenton Irwin, who has a personal best eight catches for 60 yards in a, in a role that supports with Higgins injured, um, with Charlie Jones injured, Trent Norwin steps up and plays his tail off. So that's what the wide receiver group is all about. They have a great room. They play with a lot of emotion and intensity. And Troy Walters is responsible for that. And you'll understand why when you hear this guy is the best. Thanks for taking some time to join us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, we're in the studios at First Star Logistics, and we've got a very special guest today. We've got a guy who was a tremendous wide receiver himself at Stanford. Some special mention, honors, most, I think, uh, significantly. How about the Fred Bolitnikoff Award winner is the best wide receiver in the country while at Stanford. So this guy knows of what he speaks his players, he, of course, went on to an NFL career, Indianapolis Colts with a guy named Peyton Manning as, as his quarterback for, for a bit. So his players know he knows of what he speaks, and they respond to this guy, and uh, and they love him. I'm telling you, every man in that room can't say enough about Bengals wide receiver coach Troy Walters, and we appreciate you joining us, sir. Uh, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. So, man. Jamar Chase, in the last two games, or last three games, I should say, 33 catches in the, in the last three games. I'm telling, uh, unbelievable. He had a 15 catch uh, uh, game to break the club record. Targeted 19 times, 192 yards, three touchdowns. This guy, special, isn't he, Coach? I mean, what what is it that makes him? What is the thing that is maybe the most significant trait or? thing that he possesses that makes him so special or is there just one yeah well one of the things he, he is it, it it's an, really an intangible he, he has great work ethic i mean every day he comes to work um he, he's he's he you know he's, he never gets complacent um and he just works his tail off he stays stays after practice with me works um so you know a lot of times maybe a first round top five pick may um, rest on his athletic ability and, and, and stop working. But the day we drafted him, he's, he's come in and really put in the work day in and day out. And then, uh, you know, he has, he has just a combination of things, great hands. He's a strong run after the catch uh, receiver, has great speed. Um, and so just a combination of all those things makes him a, makes him a special player. The catch he made on the 63-yard touchdown where – I mean, he made it look so easy, but the ball, when it's like pretty much over directly over your head, that dude, that's the toughest one to catch, isn't it? That's a tough catch. And I think a lot of people watch it and say, you know, that was a routine. He, he needs to make that easy catch. But after watching it, the way that, like you said, it went right over top of his head, kind of had to flip his head a little bit. Um, that was a fantastic catch and, and great concentration. And, and we needed that. That was a big play in the game, really a momentum swing and, and uh, really got us rolling uh, there in the in the second half. And the other thing about him, um, he's got all these physical traits. And then you talked about the intangible with his work ethic, and then his football IQ. I mean, he can he can line up anywhere and absorb what's supposed to be done. And he's always in the right place, doing the right thing, and um, you know, complete trust no matter where he is on the football field with quarterback Joe Burrow. That's got to be enormous. Yeah, that's one of the things that he's done uh, since he's been here. He's really expanded his knowledge of the game, expanded his knowledge of the offense, where 
now we can move them around and, and play different positions, play different spots, understanding coverage and what the defense is trying to do. And, uh, you know, with a special talent like himself, uh, defense is key in on him. So if he's just always on the outside um, as a number one receiver, it's easy to cover him. It's easy to roll coverage. And so now we're able to mix it, uh, mix where he lines up, uh, where he lines and, and, and really um, presents problems to the defense. You know, it seems like that that's gotten contagious. Uh, Trent, I'm talking, I'm going to talk about Trent Norwin. Here, here's another guy that steps up and has an eight catch 60 yard game, a, a, a personal record eight uh, catches is, is an unbelievable performance by him to go with the 15 uh, game our 15 catch game that Jamar had, which is a club record as well as his individual record. But Trent was talking about how, you know, uh, under your guidance, he can line up anywhere and feel comfortable with the knowledge of the assignments. I remember back in the day, we might've had one guy that could do that in a great year, maybe two. But now it seems like you've got all your guys doing that coach. I mean, do you do that with the young receivers too, with the Charlie Joneses and the Yoshi Vosses and those guys? Yeah, when they come in, we, we try to install and teach them the, the entire offense and teach them concepts so they can play multiple positions. One of the th first things I say to young guys is that the more you know, the better. The more you know, the more valuable you are. The more positions that you play, um, it's going to be hard to get rid of you. And so Trenton is one of those guys that has come in and he's learned all the positions. Um, great route runner. Quarterbacks have trust in him. Uh, you know, I kind of relay my my story. My when I, when I played, I was just like Trent. You know, I was the fourth, fifth receiver um, amongst some great receivers. And anytime you know my number was called, I had to step up. I had to produce, and and uh, there there couldn't be a drop. And and so he's he's he has that same attitude that when his number's called, he's ready, he's prepared. Um, and so you never fear, you never worry when he goes in the game because usually the ball's going to go to him and he's going to make a play. Uh, we had him on our, our radio show on Friday before the game. Um, and then he stepped up and had that huge game. So we're kind of taking credit for it now. Just kidding. But when Keep he having was, him on. Yeah. When he was talking about you, coach, it wasn't just the words he was saying, because, you know, on radio, that's all you can hear. But the expression on his face, the look that he had when he was talking about what you've meant to his career was like, man, I'm, I'm thinking, man, this – he has a special place in his heart for you now. There's a there's a bond there, and it's more than just being fellow alums at Stanford. I mean, he he respects the heck out of you and everything you're about. Yeah, I, I appreciate Trenton, and, and and I respect him too. His work ethic, um, like I said, his resiliency. You know, we cut him last at last camp, and uh, brought him back uh, next day, and he was on the practice squad for a few weeks, and. Like I said, he always prepares. He always he's the first one out on the field, last one to leave. Um, studies every position, and, and the quarterbacks have trust. The coaches have trust, and he's just a guy that uh, you want on your team. He can do everything. He's returned, uh, had a great day returning punts, um, and so whatever you know, whatever number and whatever role he's called and asked to do, he he's he he delivers. He, he does. I mean, uh, you know, he takes ownership of that role. There's no question about it. And he. And when his opportunity comes, this dude is always physically and mentally ready, isn't he? And like you said about the uh, uh, the return game, he was a huge factor. There are four punt returns for 68 yards, average 17 per along a 28. That's a few first downs that uh, offensively you don't have to worry about. That's big time, isn't it? And then yeah, the yeah, those are hidden yards, and, and we really preach to all the returners, hey, if you can get 10 yards and a first down, that's that's huge for, for the offense. And and typically in this league, if you average 10 yards of return at the end of the season, you're probably in the top five. So um, it's not easy to return punts. And so to average, uh, you know, 17, 18 yards, that, that's a tremendous day. It really is. I mean, if he had enough returns, he'd be fifth in the NFL right now in punt returns if he had, uh, if he had enough to qualify. And you know all about that, too. You, you provided that, uh, that for your football team. The other thing about him that I love is, um, man, he blocks his tail off, man. Whether when it's on the edge in the running game or wide receiver screen block for a teammate or whatever, the dude he gives you everything. He spends he puts it all out there. Well, he 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 doesn't take a day for granted, you know. Um, and so whenever his number, whenever he's on that field, he's gonna give it it all, give it give everyone his all, and and uh, make sure he's doing the right thing. And 
and he understands that if he's not, then, uh, you know, you can be out of this league quickly. Um, so he's he's one of those perfectionists and a uh, guy of uh, receiver of great detail. And and uh, when he goes on the field, he 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 contributes. So Jamar can line up anywhere and everywhere. Trenton Irwin can do that. Uh, Higgins has lined up in multiple spots. Is, is, is T capable of lining up anywhere for you as well or, or all, all your veteran guys in that category, coach? Yeah, really everybody we have can line up. We want to move them around, even, you know, even a T. We don't want him to just line up on the outside and uh, where you can easily get doubled and, and guys can get up and press you. You know, we want to make sure we move him around. And, and you've seen that this season where he's lined up at number three. Sometimes he lines up by himself on the backside. And so we always want to uh, be able to move guys around, put them in advantageous situations and, um, and so he's a guy. He understands the offense, and so he can he can move around as well. And your 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 position got nicked up a little bit. The football gods weren't kind in the early uh, stages of the season. You got T with a little bit of the rib problem, and and Charlie uh, Jones with the with the thumb uh, the fracture there in his uh, in his thumb. Um, <laughs> it tests your depth right away, doesn't it? It does, and that's one of the first things that we talk about in. Uh, spring and even in fall camp is that we've got to have depth injuries happen you know you hope they don't but they 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 typically do and that the next man has got to be ready to step in and there can't be a a loss of production and uh and we, we since i've been here you know we've we we've been uh able to do that we've been able to replace guys when they've gone down you know last year jamar missed um four or five games and and a t and trenton and tb they all stepped up and and contributed while he was gone and and this year we've been hit with inj the injury bug, but uh, we've got guys who, uh, you know, they know the offense, they know what's expected, they know the standard, and so when their numbers call, they're they're ready to produce. It seems like uh, the veteran guys, when you're talking about those kind of things, they know the standard, they know what's expected. The veteran guys get the young guys up to speed in that regard pretty darn quickly. I mean, and and the young guys look to those veteran guys as you know role models. A, leadership you have, you have a pretty good room in that wide receiver room don't you yeah we have a great room um you know the older guys uh tb and, and t and you know jamar he's an older guy in that room you know they really and, and and stanley morgan they really set the tempo set the culture um you know when new when young guys come in new guys or even rookies come in uh it's it's a it's an easy group to get along with um that's one of the things i love about them that they, they make guys new guys feel at home and, and Andre and Charlie and Shed, those guys have, uh, they, they embrace those guys. And now they're, you know, they're part of the family. They get along, they hang out. Um, so it's always good to see, cause you got to have that camaraderie off the field in, in order to be tight on the field. And, and we have that. And, and, uh, it all stems from the, the veteran guys and, and their personality and their outgoing nature and, and their selflessness, you know, they, they're not, they're not, uh, you know, they're not envious. They're not jealous. They're not worried about a guy coming in, taking their spot. They, they want to help who's ever on this roster. Talk about uh, how big it was when Kwame Lasseter made that catch for, for a couple of yards. I mean, obviously his dad was, you know, a legend at that, uh, with that franchise and his mom was there and uh, Joe Burrow put a little tag on a run play with, you know, that could potentially throw it and he gets that ball out for that his first catch of that, that two yard reception. And that had to be just what, what was going through your, your mind and your heart at that point, coach. Yeah, it was a, it was a great moment. Um, nothing but joy, happiness for, for Kwame. Um, like I said, just like Trenton and know that he's come in and he's worked his tail off and, you know, he was a free agent and, and, uh, and, um, uh, you know, probably got offered maybe more money to go other places, but, uh, he said, no, I want to, I want to be a Bengal. Um, I trust what you all are saying, and he's come in and, and uh, done a hell, heck of a job, works his tail, works his butt off. Um, as a guy that, you know, if you have to bring him up off the practice squad, you feel confident that he's going to go in and, and make plays. And just to go back home and, and like you said, where his dad um, had a great career and to be able to get his first NFL catch, and um, it was special because he, he he deserves it. He's he's earned it. He's a, um, I guess a tremendous young man, and – and, uh, you know, he's always ready, too. So, you know, if, if he had to play more in that game, he could have gone in and, and made some plays and we'd have been confident that he, he would have. So just happy, proud of him. And, uh, you know, when, he, when his number's called, he'll be ready to go again. 
Yeah, that's, that was kind of like a made-for-TV moment, almost like a made-for-TV movie, you know, that whole thing, man. That that uh, that brought a lump to my throat, I know. it's uh, it, it's that's, that's really good stuff. The, the thing that, that I really respect, you know, as a former lineman, you know, where you got to, you know, just get your nose dirty and, uh, and it, it, there's not a whole lot of glamour and glory that goes with it. I really respect how your receivers all block for each other and for the running backs and everybody else. I mean, there's not one guy – that's not willing. And I mean, they get after it and that's a tribute to you and, and, uh, and, and them for, you know, responding to the techniques you're teaching and going out and executing them. It really comes down to the culture that Zach's uh, established here in terms of being unselfish, um, being a team first player. Um, and, and those guys have bought into that. And, and we just, you know, I just continue to model and echo, you know, what really, what Zach from the top, what he, what he preaches and, and uh, those guys understand, and, and they they there's so much love amongst the players that we want to block for a Joe Mixon and and uh, Chris Evans and who you know who's ever back there getting the ball, and and we want to make sure that when they get the ball, that we're doing what we have to do so they can be productive and, and make plays, and and um, because we know that they're going to do the same for us. You know, we run a route, you know, you got to have the offensive line blocking and, and the running backs protected, and you know, it's, it's not just about us. So. Uh, we understand that. We understand that big plays in the run game um, are are made because receivers are getting after it down the field. You know, you can get four or five, but those those explosive runs, those 15, 20, 30 yard runs, a lot of times is because the receivers are, you know, blocking down the field and giving extra effort. So uh, we don't want to be one dimensional. We don't want to just be pass catchers. We want to be uh, pass catchers, run, run blockers. Um, we want We want to do the dirty work as well. Tell you, sometimes, you know, Jamar's so damn strong, his entire body. I mean, I think his fingernails can bench 300. It's crazy. I mean, when he he lights people up and when he blocks them too, I mean, he lights them up when they try to, you know, bring them down with, with poor technique. He makes them pay for that. But he's he's a physical dude, man. I, I love watching that guy play. Uh, give us an update on, on the two rookies. You know, Charlie, I know, is injured right now, but how is Charlie doing? What was he giving you? And what about Andre? Yeah, Charlie's doing a good job. You know, um, really, this is his first year playing in the slot, so it's been an adjustment in, in, in uh, training camp. I think he got better and better um, as training camp went on, as the preseason went on, um, and so we're excited about him. And then, you know, he made a his role right now is being a punt returner, and he made a, a, a huge explosive play against Baltimore uh, with the touchdown, and so he's only going to get better in that regards, and and uh, he's a guy that really fits the culture in terms of coming in, working hard, um, getting out on the field early, staying late, always next to the coaches wondering what he can do better. Um, so we're excited to have him. And then Andre, uh, you know, he's 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 made an impact on special teams. I don't know if people have noticed that, but he's a core special teams guy. He's on all three or four of them and, and making plays and. And, uh, you know, when his number was called last week in the game, he, he made he made a catch and uh, made a had two. The, the one he caught on the sideline was close. Um, didn't have really any replay to see if he was in or not. But um, he's going to continue to get better the more reps he gets, the more playing time he gets. And we're excited about his future. So when when Joe was – I watched Joe in the pregame warm-ups uh, before the Arizona game, and I'm like, oh, man, he's moving so different. I, You know, he was – simulating pressure in the pocket and he had the jackhammer feet going and sidestepping and climbing. And I was, Oh boy. And then he's out of pocket, you know, half boots, full boots, naked, all that. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, this, this is going to be different. How, how tough, I know what it's like uh, for an offensive lineman when the quarterback has to be stationary, you know, because of a medical scenario, how, di how different is the dynamic for the receivers when, you know, it's like, boy, I got to win right away on my route because you know, the secondary, you know, when we're ex um, extending and creating, that's kind of taken away. How, how big an adjustment was that for the guys? Yeah, they, it really, you know, it starts with the defense. And when, when a quarterback doesn't have mobility and they know he has to get the ball out quick, you know, they can sit on routes. They can play tighter coverage um, and really disrupt the timing. And so it's, it's tough on receivers. Uh, we understand that, you know, our role is to get open. So, you know, if the quarterback is, you know, lacks mobility, then it's our job to find ways to, to get open. There's no excuses not to. And and so, but, uh, you know, a healthy Joe, he's he's one of the best in the game. 
And so when you see him running around and using his legs and his feet and, um, you know, he's 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 the one of the best out there. And so it's always good when he's healthy and, and uh, it looks like he's getting back to that 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 standard. And uh, it definitely makes our job a lot easier and because um, he does a great job extending plays. And that's where a lot of times big plays come from his, his him extending plays and a couple of the touchdowns we scored um, were a result of him extending plays in the red zone. First one, when he threw it back to Chase, he kind of um, the first two reads weren't there. So he extended the play and, 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 and came back to the third read. And then the last touchdown, you know, the first two reads weren't there. And he uh, kept it alive with his legs and, and hit Jamar in the back end zone. So um, it's always good when Joe's healthy and he, he hope he's going to continue to get healthy and continue to get better. In, in, the, in the low red zone or red zone when he's throwing it uh, on third down, it's like he'll try to extend he'd take take that extra time because if you take a sack, it's still with McPherson, it's still a field goal, and you might score a touchdown based on, you know, taking that extra time, holding on to the football. And, you know, as fans, it's like, oh, get rid of it, get rid of it. But, you know, Joe, Joe knows what he's doing, that's for sure. Watching, watching you um, work with your receivers, I mean, you'll run. You'll run with them. Uh, you'll you'll go get in lines and catch you know catch uh, passes from from quarterbacks with them and, and that sort of thing. There's not probably a whole lot of receiver coaches around the National Football League that that can do that. Uh, that are capable of doing that anymore physically. That's got to be uh, I think a relatable thing uh, with your players. Do you feel like they hey coach man he still got some juice. Yeah, I, I try to, like I said, I don't, I don't take a moment in the NFL and coaching here with the Cincinnati Bengals for granted. You know, I'm blessed to be here, blessed that Zach gave me this opportunity, uh, love the guys I'm around. So I just try to have fun and try to um, just try to soak up every moment, every experience, whether it's uh, playing ping pong in the, in the locker room to, you know, uh, grabbing a bite to eat on the road or just being around the guys. And And so as long as I can run routes, I like to you know, put the cleats on and, and, and pre 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 game and go out there and run routes and catch balls and just to allow them to see that I still have a little bit in me. Um, but I'll tell you a quick story what happened in Arizona. Um, the last the last route we run or it's, it's a go ball. So you're just running full speed, you know, 40, 40 yards down the field. And uh, A.J. McCarron was my quarterback. I usually go last. And so I came off the ball, head down, grinding, pumping my arm. So it looked like I was about to run very fast. And and so he threw it out there. And, uh, you know, what one thing when you're 46, about to 47, you don't have I don't have top end speed anymore. And so he threw it out there. But I had flashbacks in my playing days. So I said, I got to catch it. So I I tried to burst and to, to catch it. And I ended up tweaking my uh, – pulling my quad muscle. And so oh, I went man. down, fell down on the ground. Oh, Guys man. were laughing. I got up. I said, no, I, I pulled my quad. And so, uh, you know, at some point I got to I got to slow down a little bit. But, uh, you know, I, I always like to have fun and, and just and just experience what they're experiencing. So for me, I'm able to – if I'm running routes before the game, I can get the feel of the grass, the turf. Is it slick? Is it, you know, and, and the playing conditions and – and now I can relate to them and I know what they're going through. So and, and and the weather, if it's windy, if it's cold, I can kind of get a feel for what they're going through and and uh, add any advice if I can help. That's great. That's a great point. And I mean, to be able to do that, it's that's that's huge. Is the quad OK? Was it just a minor thing or how are you? Uh, I'm questionable for uh, <laughs> for this Sunday. I might have to rest up and I got the bye week the following week and then I should be I should be 100 percent. Uh, I hear you. I hear you. Jamar, I went up to him in the locker room in the post game and I said, uh, man, you were targeted 19 times. He goes, I was, <laughs> I said, yeah, you caught 15 of them, man. That's a, that's a team record, you know? And, and, uh, you know, it, it was, it was great. I, I thought, I thought he relayed the, the story with Zach was Zach called him up to his office and Jamar thought he was in trouble because, you know, he said, I'm always bleeping open, you know? Um, and they take one, one little segment out of a two and a half minute answer and anything can happen. You know how it goes with that in yeah. terms of media selection, how they're going to present things. And he said, Zach, uh, you know, said to him, I heard your whole interview it was awesome, man. That, that whole thing was awesome. And um, so he said he felt, you know, felt some relief there, but he is always open. I mean, the dude, it, it is unbelievable 
how that guy, a high, such a high percentage of the time, his when he, his stutter step is so dynamic, and then when he accelerates, the power that he accelerates with, he is he is such a rare cat, man. He really is. He is. He is. Uh, you know, it's a combination of of, of strength, of speed. You know, he has size, um, and so you know he's able to use all those to his to his advantage and. And, uh, you know, when you get the ball in his hands and, and that's what we've done a, a better job this year, just getting the ball in his hands close to the line of scrimmage and allowing him to, to make plays and make make uh, make guys miss and, and run through arm tackles and, you know, take a five yard catch and, and, and turn into an explosive. And then and then when they get close and they want to challenge him, then we can go over top. And so we've we definitely have to be better at at, at, at the at the deep ball and, and as receivers making sure we're, we're good on our technique and allowing uh, saving space for the quarterback, but, um, you know, just creating more explosives down the field in terms of the deep ball, which, which Chase did uh, last week against Arizona. But we need more of that to, to really uh, get this offense going and, and doing what we're capable of doing. Just a tick away on that flea flicker to Trenton Irwin, too. He got one of them. And then that on that one is like, oh, here's a flashback. It's going to happen again. And, and, uh, I think I don't think he he repped uh, for the flea flicker in either case, did he? But you guys have such faith and trust, and he knows what he's doing, right? Yeah, yeah, he knows what he's doing, and you know, it's a lot of times we want to put a guy that maybe um, they don't expect to go out for a pass, or you know, if you get T out there, you know, Jamar, they're gonna they're not they're not buying any run. They're gonna focus on him. So right. you maybe put another guy in there, and they they lose track. And he did a good job in the game going down, blocking that safety. Um, yeah you know, in the, in the run game. So it complemented that as well. And so uh, just overthrew him a little bit, but uh, you know, next time we'll, we'll hopefully we'll, we'll make it work. So I know it's uh, the early stages of, uh, of prep for the Seattle Seahawks, but um, traditionally Pete Carroll has a, a very, uh, very sound defensive football team. There's no question about that. How are they on the back end? Yeah, very impressive um, in terms I, I talked to my guys yesterday and told them this is going to be one of the toughest uh, secondaries we, we've gone against so far. Um, they play a great energy. They're long. You know, that's one of the, the staples of, of Pete Carroll's defense and corners there. I mean, they're six, four, over six feet, six, four um, long arms. They're going to challenge you at the line of scrimmage. Uh, but the thing that stands out is they play with great passion and, and energy and they fly around. And so we've got to make sure that we match that intensity because uh, if not, they'll, they'll, they can make it look bad and uh, they get after it up front, which, which helps the secondary out. So um, it's a great challenge. They've got a great defense. And uh, so the preparation has begun and we'll get a great game plan. And, and then tomorrow the guys will get back on, and uh, we'll get ready to go. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at uh, from a philosophical standpoint with their, with their pressure packages, um, Pete Carroll, he's known for running a three-four quote. A three-four is a different three-four these days than than back in the day. But but the, when he he's got, I think it's it's uh, ten different players um, are involved in the sixteen sacks that they've they've got, and a couple of them are members of the secondary. It's like four four down linemen, four linebackers, a couple of DBs. They're bringing them from everywhere with everybody, aren't they? Yeah, they've got a sound defense. They they understand the scheme and and. They they play with great energy, and so when you when you you know, play with great energy, you understand the scheme. They don't do a lot, um, but they what they do they do well. They know their weaknesses, they know the strengths, and and they play with great passion and energy. So, um, like I said, it's a, it's going to be a tremendous challenge, and we've got to make sure that uh, we have a great week of preparation, and uh, we match their intensity on on Sunday, and uh, it should be a good game. Coach, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, that the wide receiver group will match that intensity and energy because, man, you get it out of them. They, they work hard for you. I think, I think part of the reason they work so hard is because they know they're getting coached so well, you know, and, and you got to take advantage of that. And you got them playing at, uh, at, at, a, at a very, very high level and appreciate everything you do for the Cincinnati Bengals. And thanks for spending some time with us today, sir. Yeah. Always great to come on and, and share some, some insight and, uh, he like said it's a big game this uh, on Sunday. Need the fans to be out there, give us that home field advantage, which I know they will. And and uh, we need to get another win, and then uh, go into the bye, and, and then have this really second half of the season to keep.
keep getting better. That's it. Three and three at the bye. Even Steven and rest up and get ready. Here we get go. Ready. Appreciate you. All right. Thanks, man. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.